today we're going to start with the Mosin project that Eric's working on. Uh, we're going to trim the barrel down to how many inches do you want? We're going to go 22 inches. 22 inches. To measure correctly, you need to make sure that you've got a bolt in the gun, and you're going to use a rod to measure from the muzzle until the rod touches the face of the bolt and stops. Don't bang it against it, you don't want to damage the bolt. Take your finger and hold it against the rod where it stopped, against the muzzle. Take it out and then take your measurement from the end. If this measuring tape can work. <clears throat> uh, this barrel is approximately 28 and a half inches long. Alright, we determined we're going to have to take off approximately 6 and a half inches of this barrel to get it to the length that we want it to be. So let me get a marking pen. We're going to go a little shy of the six and a half inch mark because we're going to do this with a combination of tools. Something that you don't have to have a lathe to do this. That's what we're going to be demonstrating today. One of the tools used, most everybody should have this, standard hacksaw. This tool right here would be just fine for taking off the light burrs, but we're going to try squaring it up a little bit first. A little bit of squaring up on the hard wheel, and then we're going to clean it up a tad more on the belt, on the soft part of the belt. Something hard to tell here, this is definitely not finished yet, but if you look as I turn this, the bore is not concentric and centered uh, on the outside of the barrels. Uh, it's just the way they do these. They may bore them straight, but sometimes the outsides of the barrels don't get turned on a true center. Uh, you'll find that with a lot of production guns. may not be pretty, but that's the way it is. These are crowning tools that Brownell sells. It's a complete set. You don't have to buy the whole set if you're just doing specific calibers. The complete set, though, is not inexpensive. Home hobbyists may not want to spend that, but it's like six or seven hundred bucks for these precision tools. We're basically using our drill motor as a little miniature lathe? More or less. It gives a lot of torque. You want to go slow, but you need a lot of torque. You can do it by hand. It comes just with the hand tool, and you can get the extra parts to put the tools in a drill motor. You also want to use a, a good amount of oil. This particular tool is meant to square the crown up. It's flat. The mandrel should be a tight fit, correct? It should be a firm, not firm, but it shouldn't have any play. And there are plenty of different sizes in the set. So you shouldn't have any trouble finding the one that's best for it. Go slow, use lots of oil. I'd say that was pretty close, just with the belt sander. All right, and that's all the metal we took off. Yeah, just a few chips. If you're careful with the belt sander, you can get really, really close with that. You can do all this with hand files. It just takes a lot of extra time. We're going from our flat tool. We're going to take our pilot out of the flat cutting tool, and we're going to change it over to a 79 degree or 11 degree included angle, and that's going to be our target crown.
again don't forget to use plenty of oil well it's cheap tools or not especially not a customer's gun <laughs> This particular tool is a cup cutter. It actually puts the slide radius on the crown of the uh, barrel on the exterior edge so you don't have a sharper out outer edge of the barrel. Same thing with this, a little bit of oil. It doesn't have a centered pilot. Basically it's just going to go with the outside contour of the barrel. A bit of brass will help break any sharp edges that you've got. And we'll put a little bit of polishing rouge on that too. Could be black. Yeah. Yep. Should be nice and polished. Doesn't take a lot. Get these things rolling with a starter punch. And find you a good one that's real close to the size of the hole so you don't bend your punch if they're still stiff. Pins are out. Take the side out too. Not much holding that in. No, just the pressure of the spring leaf. Now the fun part if this thing is soldered in. Yeah, it may be. You can see some of the silver down in the crack there. Nice neutral flame. Pretty clean. I'm about to get this booger hot here. Get the pounding, boy. Don't you get pretty hot to melt that silver? You're pretty sure that's that silver, right? Silver solder? Well, it's actually melt pretty darn fast, so it may not be that hard. And we are using eye protection, people. There she goes. I dare you to touch it, lick it. <laughs> well, there's our sight base. That's it. So we had to get that up to, that was probably about 12, 1300 degrees. Pretty darn hot. It takes about that to get it starting to glow, I believe. You get a good dark cherry at about 1100, so it's probably 12 or better.